In this video, we'll prove an if and only if statement. To prove an if and only if statement, we have two conditional proofs in one. So, it's kind of like approaching this as though you have two statements to prove. You're trying to prove for any real number, m and n, we're trying to prove this forward implication that m squared is equal to n squared then m is equal to n or m is equal to negative n. The other conditional statement we're trying to prove is for all real numbers m and n. If m is equal to n or m is equal to negative n, this implies that m squared is equal to n squared. And this is just because of the logical equivalence, p if and only if q is logically equivalent to p implies q and q implies p. So once we prove these two conditional statements, then we've proven the if and only if statement. So let me give you an outline for both of these conditional proofs. If I want to prove m squared equals n squared implies m equals n or m equals negative n. I'm going to try a direct proof. It might not work, but let's just try it. So with a direct proof, I'm going to assume the hypothesis is true. And then I'm going to try to show that if this hypothesis is true, we can get to this conclusion. So let's see what we know if we assume that m squared equals n squared. Well, we want to end up with this, so it would be nice if I could somehow solve this equation for m and n to see if it gives me something more specific. What we could do is subtract n squared from both sides. Now you might want to take the square root of both sides, but Really, we're trying to prove that square root property, that when you take the square root of both sides, then you have to consider the positive or the negative root. So you don't want to use what you're trying to prove to prove the statement. So what I'm going to try is something a little bit different. I'm just going to manipulate this equation by subtracting n squared from both sides. After I do that, I've got m squared minus n squared is equal to zero. Then if you think back to all your factoring work, um, I know that I can factor m squared minus n squared. I know that that's the difference of squares. I need my first terms to multiply to be m squared and my second terms to multiply to be n squared. And then I need these two terms to add to zero. So check that factorization if you don't believe it. Um, go back to review factoring difference of squares if that doesn't seem familiar. The other thing we're going to use now is the zero product property. And the zero product property just says that if I have the product of two or more integers or real numbers and their product is zero, then it must be true that one of those numbers is zero because zero times anything is zero. So if this product is equal to zero, then one of these pieces must be equal to zero. So I'm using the zero product property, setting both equal to zero. If I add n to both sides here, you should see that we're going to get our desired conclusion, and this implication will be proved. And again, this is just background work so that we can reason through and figure out the solution before we start writing our proof. So now that you understand the bones of the proof, let's go ahead and write up this one piece, right? This alone does not prove my statement, right? I still have this remaining statement to prove. So I can't stop here, but um, let's, let's just do this one implication at a time. So um, let me start this. So I'm going to let my reader know that I'm beginning a proof. So I'm going to let m and n be real numbers. I'm going to let my reader know that I'm going to start by proving that first implication that I listed. So I'm going to say first we will we will prove that if 
m squared equals n squared, then m is equal to n or m is equal to negative n. Assume, be clear on your assumption for this part, assume m squared is equal to n squared. Then m, m squared minus n squared is equal to zero. Since m squared minus n squared is equal to m minus n times m plus n, we have that m minus n times m plus n is equal to zero. By the zero product property, this implies m minus n equals zero or m minus or m plus n is equal to zero, which is equivalent to m equal n or m equal negative n. So we've proved the first conditional statement. I have a clear assumption here that m squared is equal to n squared, and I have a clear conclusion here that m is equal to n or m is equal to negative n. So now let's go back and work up how we're going to prove the other conditional statement. I'm going to go ahead and do a transition sentence here so I know that I'm moving on to another conditional statement. So I'm going to say next I will prove, or sorry, generally you say we, uh, in proofs we will prove, uh, I think you're talking to your reader, you know? Your reader and yourself will prove this together. Uh, we will prove that if m equals n or m equals negative n, then m squared equals n squared. Okay, so let's go back to the drawing board and make sure that we understand how we can prove this before we try to write it up. Just like a draft when you're trying to write an essay, right? Um, okay, so I'm trying to prove that these equalities imply m squared equals n squared. Okay, okay so I'm going to try a direct proof here. Now again, it's not always going to work, but it's a good starting point. So if I'm doing a direct proof, I'm going to start by assuming the hypothesis is true. Okay, so to do that, I would assume that m equals n or m equals negative n. Okay. So this is an or statement, right? So this or statement is true if m equals n, but m doesn't equal negative n, or it's true if m equals negative n and m does not equal n, or it's true if both of those equalities hold, right? So what we're trying to do here, if we assume the or statement, then really we have uh, three possibilities, right? We could have that m equals n, but m doesn't equal negative n. We could have that m doesn't equal n, but m equals negative n, right? Or we could have, so here's option one, here's option two, here's option three. We could have that m equals n and uh, m equals negative n. So um, the only case that this would hold would be with zero, right? Um, but we'll see here how to use these three cases. Um, yeah, and so I think it's more straightforward here since we are working with an or statement and we have this condition where, you know, one or the other or both could be true, we could just break it up into two cases. We don't really have to go into this one, right, because it's going to be taken care of here. So what we could do was just be to assume that m equals n, show, you know, square both sides, I get m squared equals n squared, right? If m equals negative n, square both sides, m squared equals n squared. So no matter what combination of these two things happens, we're always going to get to our conclusion. So that suffices. All right, so let's write it up. All right, next we're going to prove this 
implication that we just talked through, right? So we decided to do a direct proof that worked out in our draft. So I'm going to start by assuming that m equals n or m equals negative n. Okay? If m equals n, then m squared I think we need a little bit more justification here. Um, I'm going to say if m equals n, we can square both sides. of the equation to obtain m squared equals n squared. If m equals negative n, we can square both sides of this equation to obtain m squared equals negative n squared. Notice I'm not jumping to the conclusion here just because I want to give a little bit more support and justification. So since negative n squared is equal to negative n times negative n which is equal to n squared, we have that if m equals negative n, then m squared equals n squared. Hence, if m equals n or m equals negative n, then m squared equals n squared. So now we've proven the second conditional statement, right? We've proven that if m equals n or m equals negative n, then m squared equals n squared. We've also proved the other direction where our assumption or our, our hypothesis was that m squared equals n squared, then one of these equalities is true. And that concludes our truth, or our, our proof. It is true. <laughs> okay, so be clear to your reader, your proof is ending. You should check your proof, make sure that your hypothesis and conclusions, any assumptions, all your algebra is clear and accurate. Uh, you should have complete sentences, minimal symbols, um, and reasonably easy to follow.